that's happened <laughs> just gonna wait whilst everybody gets back in the room and then we'll continue with the lesson okay sorry <laughs> hi everyone I'm just gonna wait for everybody to get back in the room before we start with the lesson really sorry I've no idea what happened Maybe there were just too many of you. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're all so supportive. Okay, 130 of you are back in the room. Let's wait for a few more before we get started. on the lesson. to join me for this commons lesson today. I have no idea what happened, but maybe it was my internet connection. Maybe it was just so many of you asking for shout outs in the live chat. But either way, we're back, internet connection looks strong and I'm ready to start your lesson. So if you are brand new and you missed it at the start, I'll just quickly refresh. There's a task sheet that you can find on the English Live Resources group that has six different activities that you can do after the lesson to extend and consolidate your learning. And it's the same place where you can post pictures and videos of your work and have a look at what other learners are up to as well. 
So um, I'll give a few shout outs before we start with the lesson because I can see the numbers are still creeping up again. So people are slowly making their way back into the live lesson. So, uh, Mummy English with Holly has just messaged me and said, yeah, it's all fine now, it's all working. So <laughs> that's good. So some shout outs. Let's say a big hello to Scarlett, who is nine, who's watched all of my lessons. Thank you, Scarlett. Hello to Ava, who is nine in Fleetwood, who says, thank you for the lessons. You're absolutely very welcome. Hello to Aurelia, who is seven, to Alexandra in Northamptonshire. Um, hello to Joel in London. A big shout out to Josh, who is 10 in Fairfield Gardens. Hello to Sophie, Grace and Emma. Hello to Annabelle and Jacob from Heath and Reach. Oh, you're just down the road. I'm going for a walk that way later. Uh, Ollie from Huddersfield and uh, who else? Hello to Hector, who is nine in Bradford. Um, hello to Amelia in Poland. A shout out to Sophie's dog, Max. Uh, Felix in Buntingford. And let's see, Sarah would like a shout out. Shout out to you, Sarah. Hello. And Sophia in London, who now wants to be an English teacher. Well, it's a wonderful job to do. So if you like English, definitely consider a career as, a, as an English teacher. Right. So we've got uh, 527 of you back in the room. Oh, it's still going up. But um, we, <laughs> my mum's just sent me a message to say dad's watching too. Uh, hello, dad. So let's get started on our lesson. So we've got a starter activity today. Um, it's a little bit different from the usual ones, um, not least because I've handwritten it instead of printing it. Uh, what I would like you to do, some of you may have had a head start if you were watching the video before the glitch. I would like you to write a sentence with five commas in it, okay? If you do this really quickly, then you can move on and do a sentence with four commas, three commas, two commas, one comma. Um, it's to get your brain working and thinking about how we use commas in sentences. I'm going to give you about one minute to one and a half minutes to do it. And um, certainly for your sentence with five commas, pop it into the live chat so I can call out names of people, of people who've done really good work. OK, there we go. Can you see that? Good luck. And off you go. Play. <laughs> finally got your shout out. Well done to Angela for your sentence. Some nice work coming through. You can't wait for their affirmation. You can't wait for their approval. You can't wait for their support. But sometimes you just gotta run and look behind you and say everybody who wants to run. Okay, so lots of you are using commas in lists for this task. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your drink just because somebody in your life is chasing it. You can't stop I need yogurt, apple, drinks, food, eggs, pie, and a dog. You can't hey. stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know when you do it, you're gonna have to do it all by yourself. Mia and Stanmore, not far from my hometown. 
downtown. Okay, well done. Hopefully you've got an array of sentences in front of you. You might be using commas in different ways in the sentence, um, but for most of you from looking at the live chat, I can see you've written a sentence with five commas in and you've used those commas to create a list. So the general rule when you're creating a list is to put a comma between those different things in the sentence. OK, and the Oxford comma is something that creeps into this, but we'll talk about that after the next task. So I'm going to put a sentence up on the board and I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to jot the sentence down and put the commas in the correct place. Uh, if you are not a quick writer, you can just point to them on the screen or you can discuss it with your parents, your adults or your siblings or just have a little think about it whatever suits you. So the sentence reads, Bertie hates buzzing noises, having his ears cleaned with a vacuum cleaner and strawberries. Whew. Doesn't make much sense without commas. So I'm hoping you can help me out here. Off you go. Play. Okay, where did you put the commas in this sentence? Well, grab my blue pen so you'll be able to see them. I'll pop them in for you now. These are all absolutely true, absolutely true, by the way. They are things that Bertie really, really dislikes. And if you're not sure who Bertie is because you're brand new today, uh, you will meet him very soon. He's my bonkers, lovely, crazy dog. So um, Bertie hates buzzing noises, comma. Having his ears cleaned, comma, the vacuum cleaner and strawberries. Now, if you were going to use an Oxford comma in this sentence, you would put it here. OK, um, however, I'm not sure an Oxford comma is necessary here in this particular sentence, because I think we can all agree that we understand that the vacuum cleaner and strawberries are two different things. But you can certainly put it there if you choose to. That's the Oxford comma. So well done if you got that right. Give yourself a little pat on the back. And if you didn't get it right, you'll get it right next time because now you know. So on to our next type of comma. So a comma can separate out um, different parts of a sentence. And like I said, uh, tomorrow's lesson, we will be looking at clauses. Sometimes we can put a comma where we might be better off putting a semicolon. Now, I did semicolons and colons, I think it was last week or the week before. So if you have been going to all of my online lessons, then uh, you should find this task really easy. Um, but it's a really good practice nonetheless. So I'm going to put two sentences up for you. One of them you would put a comma in and one of them you would put a semicolon in. So I'm going to let you have a go yourself. And uh, and then I'll explain, I'll give you the answer and I'll explain why it's so. Oh, here we go. Ooh. I will bring the board around. Here we go. Okay. So uh, Bertie loves sausages, served raw is his preference. And Bertie loves sausages, especially when served raw. 
So one of these requires a comma, one requires a semicolon. You can jot them down and write your answer. You can shout it out the screen, do it any way you like. I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds. And if once you've done it, if you are with anybody else, try and explain to them why you put it where you have put it. Play. <laughs> and where does the semicolon go in these two sentences and why? Well, make sure I get this right. <laughs> it is live. Uh, so the comma goes on this one here and the semicolon goes on this one here and I will now explain why. So these two examples are made up of two um, two different sections, two different clauses within the sentence, okay? And we've separated them both now with a comma and a semicolon. When you have a uh, clause that is an independent or a main clause that stands alone by itself, and then it's followed by one that we should, we should, maybe we could say leans on it or doesn't actually make sense by itself, that is when you would use a comma. If you used a comma in this one, it would be called a comma splice. You can use it in creative writing sometimes, um, but if you wanted to be accurate, uh, then you would use a semicolon. And the semicolon there indicates that both parts of the sentence um, are standalone, they're independent clauses, but they're so closely related that we would like to use a comma, but it's not quite accurate, so we would use a semicolon instead. OK, uh, if you're watching this video on catch up, you could pause the video now and have a quick go at writing your own examples of sentences that would use a comma in this way to separate an independent and dependent clause or a main and subordinate clause. And um, an example of how you would use the two independent clauses with a semicolon in the middle. OK, that almost sounded like a bit of a tongue twister. Let's move on to our next type of comma although actually mummy english with holly april is sending through some more shout outs so a quick hello to julia in oxford hello to violet in pool to shreya in coventry and iris in cheltenham hello to anisha in st albans and she says my lessons are great thanks anisha that's really nice and a uh, shout out to tom who is 10 in cardiff and his mum and dad and sister all work for the nhs well, please, Tom, thank them from me. Everybody, we're so grateful. So let's get on with our next comma. I'm going to take these ones down. So there are two commas that should be in this sentence. Where do you think they might go? I'm going to bring it a bit closer. Where do you think they might go? Now, we did look at this sort of comma last time I did a comma lesson, okay, and um, I said that maybe you could use the commas almost as like um, you're dropping in an extra word or phrase into the sentence, you're embedding it within your standalone sentence. I wonder if anybody can tell me where it might go. I'm going to have a look at the live chat here. Anybody? Not just yet. Yes, well done. Oh, oh, someone's put one comma in that one. 
So yes, before and after Bertie, well done to Indy Aristidou. Uh, you would put it either side of the word Bertie. Because you could take the word Bertie out of the sentence and it would still make perfect sense. So my treasured companion, Bertie, is the real star of the show. My treasured companion is the real star of the show would still make perfect sense. OK, so the commas are used there to show that that's additional extra information. Now, what about this one? It's the same rule. Where would it go here? It would go either side of the inimitable Bertie. That's the extra information that's been dropped into the sentence that we can take out. And I will talk more about clauses tomorrow, but I don't want to make these videos too overwhelming. So we'll just stick to, um, just to the basics during this lesson. OK, what I would like you to do now is to embed your own bit of extra information into this sentence using commas accurately. So my treasure companion, there's a gap here. I want you to put commas and extra information of your choice um, is the real start of the show. I'm going to give you around 30, 45 seconds to do this. As always, write it down, shout it out of the screen, discuss it with whoever you're at home with. Um, or just have a little boogie around the room to the music like I will be. OK, good luck. Play. You can't wait for their affirmation. You can't wait for their approval. You can't wait for their support. But sometimes you just got to run and look behind you and say, everybody who wants to run, run. But I can't stop running because you're running. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life will chase you. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life will believe in you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know you do it, you're going to have to do it all by yourself. For those of you that are new to English Live, that was Bertie. I will, um, I will let him come and say another hello before the very end of the lesson. So hopefully now you have put some extra information in this gap and you've put a comma either side of it to show that it's um, some extra information that you've embedded into your sentence. Now, I want you to check your own work. So I'm going to ask you three questions. And if the answer to all three questions is yes, then you've done it correctly. OK. So if you leave out what you've put here, does the sentence still make sense? Well, the answer to that should be yes, because I pre-planned this one for you. Does the clause or phrase or word that you put in this gap here, does it interrupt the flow of the original sentence? Hopefully it does. And if you move the element to a different position in the sentence, does the sentence still make sense? So could you put that information somewhere else and it still all comes together to make sense? If the answer is yes, and you've put a comma 
either side of your extra information in there, then there's a very good chance you've done it correctly and you can give yourself another pat on the back, okay? If it doesn't, not a problem. You can watch this video back, you can have another practice and you will get there eventually, okay? Right, so we are going to run out of time today because of the glitch at the start, but I do have another activity for you. So I've got two sentences. Oh, here we go. Both of the same information, but ever so slightly different. So this is based on um, British English, but I know in, uh, I think in American English, there might be a slightly different rule. So I'll have to double check that. And if anyone wants to get in touch for me to clarify, I'm happy to. So Bertie has a wonky eye, which adds to his attractiveness. One of them's over there. One of them's there. <laughs> and Bertie has a wonky eye that adds, to his, that adds to his attractiveness. So when we use the word which, we use a comma before it, but we don't use a comma before that. Okay, I will explain this uh, more fully tomorrow in the clauses lesson. But as a general rule, when you're writing, if you use which, you will need a comma before the word which. If we're using the word that, then you don't need a comma before that. Um, what I would like you to do now is to write two sentences of your choice on a topic of your choice, or you might like to do some sentences about Bertie. And I would like you to use which and that and obviously place the comma in the correct sentence. Okay, I'm going to give you about 45 seconds to do this. Um, you can shout it out, write it down, or just have a little boogie instead. Okay, good luck. Play. <laughs> sentences I can see lots of you that are using that and which um, correctly so well done for that a few shout outs before we come to the end of the lesson so right uh, mummy English with Holly has said to me say hello to Gabrielle in Wellingborough hello to Ada in Leeds uh, shout out to Harry and his dog Sky hello to Ella in Hagnall to Daisy and her mum who are in South End, and to Joel who is eight in Sway. Okay, uh, so hello and a big shout out to all of you. And a very big thank you to those of you that are treating me to some coffees. It's wonderful, it's really, really appreciated. I've got two small children, so I definitely appreciate coffee. Um, and I don't have a school to go back to. So um, I, I'm an unemployed teacher. So thank you very much if you are sending me coffees. So, uh, Bertie, do you want to say another quick hello to everybody? In fact, I'm going to turn the screen around just a little bit so you can see I put the chair here today so that he can properly join in with the lesson rather than sit on the floor. Bertie, 
You want to say hello to everyone? Oh, here he is, the star of the show. So uh, just a reminder of things that we've got going on this week. At the moment, I'm hosting a competition to create a new uh, cover picture for my Facebook page. And the deadline for that is Thursday. So if you could send that to me by Thursday, I will be announcing the winners on Friday during the Spellathon. Also on Wednesday morning at, I think it's 10.40 until 10.50, I'll be hosting a very short live behind the scenes to show you what happens when I set up for the lesson and uh, what is beyond what you can see on the screen there. And where's my clipboard? Here we go. Also, next week, I will be putting out, it isn't going to be live, but I'll be doing a video for parents, which is 10 tips for homeschooling, teaching and learning. So um, if your parents are being driven mad trying to help you with your schoolwork, they will be able to uh, watch that video if they'd like a few tips from me. So that brings me to the end of the lesson today. Thank you very much for coming back to find me after the glitch from myself and from Bertie, who's now fast asleep already. Uh, Thank you for joining us and I will see you tomorrow for the lesson on clauses, Wednesday for Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream and on Thursday, capitalisation and word classes and then of course on Friday we have the Spellathon. Have a lovely afternoon, thank you again and bye-bye. <laughs>